Hello, BookTube, and I am here with my Victober 2019 TBR. I cannot wait to tell you about these books. I've tried to show a bit more self-control in the amount that I picked this year, and also I have stro striven? I have strived? I have tried this year to have a bit of variety in my TBR. Hopefully I have been successful with both of those things. Without further ado, my 2019 Victober TBR. I will talk about the challenges first, what I'm reading for those challenges. And now the second year running, I will read the first paragraph of each selection to you. Uh, first uh, was Lucy's challenge to read an underrated Victorian classic published in the same year as your favorite Victorian classic. Now, as most of us book lovers, you know, would say, I can't pick a favorite Victorian classic. But I do know the Victorian classic that I'm pretty much in the mood for pretty much any time, and that is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And What's the nice thing about re picking a serialized novel is there are a couple years to pick from. It was published from 1864 to 1866. So I have found Barbara's History by Amelia B. Edwards published in 1864. I found out about Amelia B. Edwards when reading her ghost story, The Phantom Coach, and was so impressed by it uh, that I looked into Amelia Edwards more. And I did put on my nonfiction November TBR last year, A Thousand Miles Up the Nile, which is the true story of her traveling around Egypt. And she was a fascinating Victorian lady who just traveled everywhere and did not let her singleness kind of hold her back from, you know, with the social conventions of the day. And I wanted to read more from her, just from The Phantom Coach. I did not get around to A Thousand Miles Up the Nile. And also she is the namesake of Amelia Peabody, the uh, female sleuth from Elizabeth Peters' detective series. And I found Barbara's History. So this is supposed to be just incredibly gripping, fast-paced, really kind of pulpy Victorian novel. And the first paragraph says... I am about to tell the story of my life, that is, the story of my childhood and my youth, for the romance of life is mostly lived out before we reach middle age, and beyond that point grows monotonous, either in its grief or its gladness. Mine began and ended when I was young. So, not the happiest of kind of viewpoints, if you think that about your life, but a really engaging beginning to that. Next is Katie's Challenge, to read a Victorian book with under 250 pages and slash or one over 500 pages. So I am planning on reading Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I will be doing this as a buddy read with the lovely Megan Hannett. We're so excited to have another buddy read together. And this is definitely a shorter volume. This is also my reread. So for my challenge, this is what I will be rereading. It's a very short book. I most likely will be listening to it in audiobook format. I got this a couple years ago for Christmas and I haven't listened to it since I got it, which is a shame. And the reader is Prunella Scales. So for those of you who have seen, um, have watched Faulty Towers, uh, that's, she, that's what I know her from in Faulty Towers. But I will read the very first paragraph of Cranford in the physical book. And it says, in the first place, Cranford is in possession of the Amazons. All the holders of houses above a certain rent are women. If a married couple comes to settle in the town, somehow the gentleman disappears. He is either fairly frightened to death by being the only man in the Cranford evening parties, or he is accounted for by being with his regiment, his ship, or closely engaged in business all the week in the great neighboring commercial town of Drumble, distant only 20 miles on a railroad. In short, whatever does become a gentle, of the gentleman, they are not at Cranford. What could they do if they were there? The surgeon has his round of 30 miles and sleeps at Cranford, but every man cannot be a surgeon. For keeping the trim gardens full of choice flowers without a weed to speck them, for frightening away little boys who look wistfully at the said flowers through the railings, for rushing out at the geese that occasionally venture into the gardens if the gates are left open, for deciding all questions of literature and politics without troubling themselves with unnecessary reasons or arguments, for obtaining clear and correct knowledge of everybody's affairs in the parish, for keeping their neat maidservants in admirable order, for kindness somewhat dictatorial to the poor, and real tender good offices to each other whenever they are in distress, 
the ladies of Cranford are quite sufficient. A man, as one of them observed to me once, is so in the way in the house. I love that opening paragraph, just the really biting sense of humor, and I'm very much looking forward to buddy reading this with Megan. Then for the over 500 pages, because you better believe I am doing both parts of this challenge, I am going to take on Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. I tried reading this in the Serial Reader app. I started last October, but I do not do well reading classics at just such little snippets. I find I start to forget the story and I don't like dragging it out that long. So I think a month or two months kind of is the longest I want to take for a book like this. And I will be reading this. I'm very much looking forward to it. This is the tale of the ruthless and what do I want to say? Kind of plotting Becky Sharp and her attempts to rise in society. Chapter one. While the present century was in its teens, and on one sunshiny morning in June, they drove up to the great iron gate of Miss Pinkerton's Academy for Young Ladies on Chiswick Mall, a large family coach with two fat horses in blazing harness, driven by a fat coachman in a three-cornered hat and wig, at the rate of four miles an hour, a black servant who reposed on the box beside the fat coachman uncurled his bandy legs as soon as the equipage drew up opposite Miss Pinkerton's shining brass plate. And as he pulled the bell, at least a score of young heads were seen peering out of the narrow windows of the stately old brick house. Nay, the acute observer might have recognized the little red nose of good-natured Miss Jemima Pinkerton herself rising over some geranium pots in the window of that lady's own drawing room. The next challenge is Angie's, and that is to read a Victorian novel by a female author and bonus points for a new-to-you female author. Uh, so I will be reading A Struggle for Fame by Charlotte Riddell. A very fun note about this book. Also, I love the pink spine and the cover. I feel like the sticker on the face is symbolizing something there. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I host a monthly live show called Talking Amongst Our Shelves. Uh, I will link it down below in case you are interested. We will definitely be discussing Victober reads at some point during Victober. And I decided with the ladies, what if we did a mystery Victober book swap? Because we all are obsessed with Victober. They are very enthusiastic about it. And I appreciate it so much because as we all know, I am very enthusiastic about Victober. And so Bethany sent me this. This was on, I had put it on one of my like Goodreads Victorian books I was interested in, but honestly had forgotten about it. So it was a lovely like, oh yeah, I really wanted to read that a couple years ago. So uh, this, uh, the title kind of explains a struggle for fame, what it's going to be about, but I know that it, she is Irish and she moves to London to try to make her way in the world after her father dies. And it's her struggle in life. So it starts out the 17th of October, 1854, a dull cloudy morning, a mist of rain, making everything damp and uncomfortable, a raw wind blowing off the channel. Morecambe Bay looking its dreariest, the Irish steamer very late, just in, laden with passengers and cattle, the former in time to hear the London Express had gone, the latter frightened and troublesome, already giving assurance, subsequently, no doubt, amply fulfilled, that the work of debarkation would not be light or easy, a babel of voices, ropes tripping up unwary passers-by, chains rattling, beasts bellowing, sheep bleeding, drovers swearing, sailors shouting, porter shouldering luggage, a good column of black smoke issuing from the funnel, the deck wet and slippery, a smell of fried fish mingling with odors of bilge water, coffee and tar, rushing up the cabin stairs, men and women with all the color washed out of their faces, looking mournfully at the weather, altogether a miserable scene, which appeared the more wretched because on the previous afternoon, the sun had been shining brightly in Ireland, and it seemed as if in England, the sun never meant to shine again. I really love the sound of this first paragraph. It's just incredibly detail oriented, giving you an idea of the setting and I'm very impressed. So I'm very much looking forward to pressing forward with this book. The group challenge for this year is to read by candlelight. I'm very much looking forward to that. I don't have a specific book in mind for that. I will just see whatever out of my TBR suits my fancy. And then moving on to the group reads, uh, which are A Woman of No Importance and The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. I have, I don't know if I've ever read a play, honestly. If I have, it's been so long 
And I just really, I, I wanted more variety in my Victober TBR. And in past years, I've basically read novels. I haven't read much else. So I was really pleased when we decided to do these for the group reads. And I found a bundle on Hoopla, an audiobook bundle that includes these two, and also an ideal husband and Lady Windermere's fan. And I've heard good things about those plays. So I decided I would just check out the whole bundle and then I will be picking up this Penguin Black Classics edition from the library and following along in the physical copy, but listening to actors because in this bundle that I'm getting, it's actors that, um, you know, a full cast that will be performing this. I'm very much excited. And I think it will be a nice lighthearted and humorous kind of part aspect of my Victober and I'm very much looking forward to it. And another fun thing that I'm doing is knit and listen. I am a co-host along with Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures, Christy from the Tiny Chronicles, and Natalie from the Curious Reader. We are hosting a knit and listen event where you listen to an audiobook of Adam Bede by George Eliot. And then we will be uh, knitting different sweaters. And some people are following along with the sweaters that we are hosting. And others uh, are either knitting their own project or they are crocheting or quilting or um, what else? Do I, maybe some sewing I saw in the comments. I'm very excited about it. It's just so very Victorian to be knitting and listening to someone reading a book to you. So the book opens at, uh, like this. It says, with a single drop of ink for a mirror, the Egyptian sorcerer undertakes to reveal to any chance comer far-reaching visions of the past. This is what I undertake to do for you, reader. With this drop of ink at my pen, I will show you the roomy workshop of Mr. Jonathan Burge, carpenter and builder in the village of Hayslope, as it appeared on the 18th of June in the year of our Lord, 1799. So Adam Bede follows four characters' lives in this very rural community. And as we just heard her say, 1799, this is set in the past. So I'm very much looking forward to this. I have really loved, very much loved, two out of the three George Eliot books I have read. So definitely want to read more out of her catalog. And yeah, I'm just very much looking forward to it. Next on the list is another buddy read, and that is Olive by Dinah Mullet Crake. I will be reading this with Natalie from my reading days. She is such a lovely booktuber to do buddy reads with, and she just is so happy to be a part of the booktube community and be discussing literature with other book lovers, and she's just a delight to read with. So Olive opens up as, Poor wee lassie, ye have a wearisome welcome to a wearisome world. Such was the first greeting ever received by my heroine, Olive Rothsay. However, she would be then entitled neither a heroine nor even Olive Rothsay, being a small nameless concretion of humanity, in color and consistency strongly resembling the red earth whence was taken the father of all nations. No foreshadowing of the coming life brightened her purple, pinched up, withered face, which, as in all new world children, bore such a ridiculous likeness to extreme old age. No tone of the all-expressive human voice thrilled the unconscious wail that was her first utterance, and in her wide, open, meaningless eyes had never dawned the beautiful human soul. There she lay, as you and I, reader, with all our compeers, lay once a helpless lump of breathing flesh, faintly stirred by animal life, and scarce at all by that inner life which we call spirit. And, if we thus look back in compassion, half in humiliation at our infantile likeness may, it not be that in the world to come, some who in this world bore an outward image, poor, mean, and degraded, will cast a glance of equal pity of their well-remembered olden selves, now transfigured into beautiful immortality. I am really looking forward to this. Katie from Books and Things has just talked about this book a lot and has made it sound really compelling. Olive is the story of a woman with a deformity and is treated as lesser because of it. So there are not many characters with deformities in Victorian novels. I am very interested and intrigued to read this and it has been recommended by Katie for those who like Jane Eyre and I love Jane Eyre. Next on the list is another buddy read and that is The White Company by Arthur Conan Doyle. I decided to pick this up when my husband said it was one of his favorite books ever. And when Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures said she was reading it as part of her Read Scotland project, I asked if we could buddy read it during Victober. So 
Very much looking forward to this. It is a tale of medieval adventure, and it opens up like so. The great bell of Bolu was ringing. Far away through the forest might be heard its musical clangor and swell. Peat cutters on Blackdown and fishers upon the X heard the distant throbbing rising and falling upon the sultry summer air. It was a common sound in those parts, as common as the chatter of the jays and the booming of the bittern. Yet the fishers and the peasants raised their heads and looked questions at each other, for the Anglis had already gone and Vespers was still far off. Why should the great bell of Beaulieu toll when the shadows were neither short nor long? So I am feeling a little bit intimidated, I think because it's historical fiction. I don't know that it, just the language will be hard, but my husband assures me that it is just really easy to get into. It's very approachable. And then Mel pointed out when I told her that, that she's never had a Conan Doyle book that was hard to read. And I thought, oh yeah, all of the books by him that I've read, which are all Sherlock Holmes books, have been very approachable. So I'm really hoping this will add some nice variety to my TBR, being an adventure tale and less a domestic novel, which is what I kind of gravitate towards. So yes, looking forward to this, and I'm hoping it will become a new favorite. Then Victober would not be Victober without a Mary Elizabeth Braddon buddy read with Kate from the novel Nomad. And this year we have selected The Doctor's Wife. So last year was The Trail of the Serpent, and it was not a hit with me. I very much was glad to be rid of that book, to be honest. And I'm just really hoping that Lady Audley's Secret was not just a fluke and that there will be many more Mary Elizabeth Braddon books for me to like. So I've heard this called kind of her retelling or her version of Madame Bovary. I don't know if it's actually like Madame Bovary, I shall see, but kind of how she thought it should have been. It will also be really interesting because there is a character in here who is a sensation novelist and wants to be taken more seriously as an author, which I know was a struggle for Mary Elizabeth Bratton. Uh, so I will read the very first part and it's, it goes like, there were two surgeons in the little town of Greybridge on the Wavern in pretty pastoral Midlandshire. Mr. Pocklet, who lived in a big new brazen faced house in the middle of the queer old high street and John Gilbert, the parish doctor, who lived in his own house on the outskirts of Greybridge and worked very hard for a smaller income than that which the stylish Mr. Pocket derived from his aristocratic patients. So the little bits that I've gathered about this, I think she is in love with someone who is not her husband. I do not want to read the back though, because classic synopses on the back are just not safe. So yeah, I'm waiting just to kind of go in. I don't have to have all that many details. I'm going to be reading it with Kate. I'm very excited to hopefully find a new uh, Mary Elizabeth Braddon book that I love. Then another buddy read and Tom from Tom Reads Books was so lovely and he did not reveal my identity when he said he was going to be reading Hard Times by Charles Dickens. So I am the booktuber who is reading this with him. I'm so excited to read with him. He's so excited about Victober and I'm so excited about Victober. It's just going to be a great time. So we're starting out the first week of Victober. We are reading this because I want to hit the ground running. I am expecting, excuse the punniness, but I am expecting to have a very hard time with hard times. I just know it's an industrial novel and I just, I just don't know what I'm going to think of this. So yeah, it just is involving factories and work conditions. And so it's very like topical of a novel. There's going to be lots of social commentary. And then the first paragraph could not sound more like a, Dick, a Dickens um, paragraph, Dickens writing. So it says, now what I want is facts. Teach these boys and girls nothing but facts. Facts alone are wanted in life. Plant nothing else and root out everything else. You can only form the minds of reasoning animals upon facts. Nothing else will ever be of any service to them. This is the principle on which I bring up my own children. And this is the principle on which I bring up these children. Stick to facts, sir. I want to read through all of Dickens' books and I have not read Hard Times yet. So I'll be getting to it. I'm hoping it exceeds my expectations. We shall see. Then to add a bit more variety into my TBR, I have selected The Goblin Market and Other Poems by Christina Rossetti. I am in love with this beautiful poetry collection. And I am attempting yet again to read poetry during Victober. I'm usually never successful, but I thought, 
Maybe if I get a beautiful bind up of poetry, I will be successful. The few poems I have read by Christina Rossetti have been stunning. I know Kate from the novel Nomad read this collection last year and really enjoyed it. So here's hoping that I enjoy it. I will not read this aloud because I think I want to experience the poems in full for the first time in this collection when I'm just reading on my own. But I'm very much looking forward to it. And then lastly, a book that I will be reading aloud with my five-year-old. I'm very excited that he will be participating in Victober, and I have found The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. I looked this up on Goodreads, and this has excellent, excellent ratings from people that are friends with me on Goodreads. And um, I will be talking about George MacDonald later in Victober. I think things are looking like George MacDonald might be an author that I will be reading a lot of. I really jive with his writing style. And this is about Princess Irene, who discovers a winding stairway in the castle. And it leads to a labyrinth of unknown passages with closed doors and a further stairway. And then there's the minor son, Curdy, who overhears a plot by the goblins that live below the mountain. And so they have some kind of terrifying plans. And let's see what the first paragraph is like. There once was a little princess whose father was king over a great country full of mountains and valleys. His palace was built upon one of these mountains and was very grand and beautiful. The princess, whose name was Irene, was born there, but she was not sent soon after her birth because her mother was not very strong. To be brought up by country people in a large house, half castle, half farmhouse, on the other side of the mountain, about halfway between its base and its peak. So very charming and whimsical writing style. Uh, this one does have a few illustrations with it, the original illustrations. And um, yeah, like I said, just hoping for some variety in my TBR. And I think a children's fairy tale will be one. I know that Tolkien and C.S. Lewis loved, like loved George MacDonald. So, and also he was a mentor to Lewis Carroll. Very excited about this. That there is my Victober 2019 TBR. Let me know what you think. I can't wait to see everybody's TBRs. Can't wait for Victober. I just, I can't handle it. I can't handle the excitement. I'm so excited. Have a lovely day and enjoy whatever books you are reading.